Paul Fran. I'm a longtime board member of Baxter Street at the Camp Club of New York, which is an arts organization that goes back to the 19th century, co-founded by Alfred Stig Stiglitz in 1884. Um, we've had different locations, of course. Um, we've been here for the last four years, I think. And our mission is to support uh, underrecognized and emerging artists in photography and video. And to that end, we have an exhibition program, a residency program for four photographers a year, um, an annual jury show, and uh, various talks, lectures, and other short programs. Um, and we're thrilled to welcome three artists from Mexico, two of whom are here today for the talk, um, and the curator, Jerry D'Souza, who um, I'm going to introduce in just a moment. But before I do that, I'd like to introduce Claudia Norman, the director of the Mexico Now Festival. Claudia, to tell you a little bit more about that. Welcome everyone. Uh, this is our second year uh, collaborating with uh, the Camera Club. Uh, we feel that uh, it's uh, both organizations uh, have the same goal, which is to promote um, emerging and uh, emerging artists. Uh, and we've been joining forces in order to make this happen. So um, for us, it's like a privilege that Jerry had chosen. Uh, the work of this amazing artist uh, is pretty much showed what the title of the festival is, is which is uh, Mexico Now, Celebrate Mexico Now. So we have the new voices on photography, and, uh, and this is like for us, uh, it makes all the sense to keep partnering. Uh, I just want to thank, they are not here, they don't know that we just started, but um, after the presentation, we, we uh, ask you to join us downstairs. We will have an amazing um, reception with uh, some mezcal testing. Uh, so you're going to learn about uh, the whole thing, uh, but before, I mean, after the presentation. So thank you so much again to the camera club. And uh, I guess we are just ready to, to start and to okay. learn from Jerry and all the uh, Thanks, Claudia. Oh, yes. Thank you. And now I'll introduce Jerry. Um, oh, is it, what is the music? Is that the video. Oh, yeah, we can turn it off. Oh, the <laughs> video. Okay. Yeah, we should turn that off. This is um, Sergio Fonseca, who lives in Guadalajara, made this video. He was participating in a program in the Sonora and the uh, Magda in those years. Uh, and we could be with us today, but so now I'd like to introduce the curator, Jerry Pesuja, who is an old friend of mine, and colleague, also teaching at some of the same schools where I teach in New York. Uh, Jerry is a photographer and artist who recently closed a show in Chelsea of his printmaking. Um, he and I both have gone to Mexico for many years now teaching workshops to Mexican doctors there, um, where Jerry um, met and learned about the work of, of both Roberto and Juan Carlos. Um, he also uh, was a juror and invited me to be a juror of the Tierney Fellowships given in Mexico for a number of years. Um, which were $5,000 fellowships given to three photographers a year in Mexico, and both of these photographers got those um, awards. So um, we are big believers of their work. Uh, Jerry is a brilliant mentor, teacher, and photographer himself, and now I'm going to turn it over to you to talk about this exhibition. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Alan. And thank you, Claudia. Let me hear something. Thank you. And uh, Michigo, I'm not here. And I also want to thank uh, another supporter of the show, which is Matt Tierney of the Tierney uh, Family Foundation. And Matt 
uh, was the founder of the Tierney Fellowship in Photography, to which he helped me form uh, about uh, 12, 14 years ago. And we chose three schools every year in Mexico. And uh, that is how I stumbled upon uh, Juan Carlos Lopez Bernales and Roberto Tondopo. Uh, by viewing their portfolios and being taken quickly, and I mean quickly. Uh, I remember when I first saw Roberto's work, and I was looking at it online, and uh, I had a friend of mine with me, a friend uh, who was at the time my student, I think Alan's student also, and I said, yeah, you've got to see this work. This is photography, this is contemporary, he is speaking our language. And um, I think that, with, with her response to it and mine, I said, yes, this, here's our winner for this year. I don't remember what year that was. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't remember what year that was. And similar to, um, to, to, to Juan Carlos also, I mean, this, this work over here uh, really captured my imagination for its deep brooding uh, uh, concept, which I kind of enjoyed. Um, and that's another kind of a, a, a photographic atmosphere that is very uh, relevant in, in contemporary photography, especially especially when images are um, fantasized and not, uh, we talked about street photography before, and Juan will, Carlos will tell you more about his feeling about that and how street photography becomes representational and where conceptual work, even done like this here, can also become a representation of concept rather than a reality, so everything is changed. So we have a lot of fantasy here, a lot of dream structure, and a, a lot of structure, and not um, uh, off the cuff, off the cuff work particularly. And that was one of the things about these two gentlemen whose work I was very much attracted to. And actually Roberto Tondopo, whose work on this side here is um, uh, very relevant to me because I share some of his ideas. I, I share some of his ideas of recreating a past, perhaps reliving it, perhaps searching for answers, perhaps wishing you were there again, perhaps wanting to be there to change it. I mean, there were so many little things that go on in a photographer's life. And I thought, well, this is perfect. For this. And also, when we did a statement, kind of brought the whole thing back to me. Um, and, well, I think uh, mentioning them to Alan, and Alan looking at the work, it just all seemed to come together. And they were chosen among others, but once again, they went out. That's one. Uh, to, to get the show. And especially with uh, uh, Mexico now, it is really, uh, I feel very privileged to be part of, of it. And I felt that all these years, my first time to Mexico, which was in well, long before they were born, actually. <laughs> before their parents were born. <laughs> which was in 1971 or 72, and I was absolutely in love with Mexico. And then I, <coughs> I came back, and then Matt Tierney sent me over there to, to meet, you know, Beatrice Diaz and a few of us at the school. And, <coughs> and as soon as I entered this city, I felt the magic again. And I always felt, when, and I've been back so many times, that it never fails to make me feel I feel comfortable. I almost feel like it's New York in the 1970s. And why I would want to feel comfortable for that, I'm not sure. But it's, <laughs> there's a comfort zone. It's the people. I've even done photo stories myself to take it to church. So, <clears throat> sorry. Without further ado, I want both of our artists to speak about themselves and give you a pretty good idea of where they were at and where they've come, and where they're at now, and a bit of a, a process, giving you an idea how they arrived at this work, and how they may have arrived at work for the next stage of their career. Which, incidentally, I have to tell you, I'm really proud of these two guys. You know, when you give away, and you're part of a fellowship program, you're part of the Guggenheim, or the New York Foundation for the Arts, and you give away money every year, you always hope that you give it to someone who will be around the following year and the year after, and the year after. And I, and, and through the foundation, I realized that that doesn't always happen. But I, I wrote to Matt uh, 
this morning, and they said, you know, we hit it. We got them from that year, and here they are. Now, 2018, and they're still moving forward. So, I give you first. Okay. One, or the back row. We should have chosen this in advance, you know. I want to say to thank you to Jerry and Anne Frank for the invitation and I have been considered for this exhibition, the saga and the experience. And and sharing this exhibition and experience with Juan Carlos, who is a good friend uh, for many years ago, and with Sergio Fonseca, who is another colleague from Mexico. And I am Mexican photographer, I am from Chiapas, and that uh, I'm showing in this exhibition is my intense project, who finished in a photo book in 2015. Um, is the most uh, intense experience because it's the relationship about between my nephew and niece um, with me. Um, it's an experience who they are living about childhood and becoming to adolescence and in, in, in intermediate and between space about subjectivity and how we construct our uh, right. I, I need to read something that I write for this series. Did you uh, let me? I want to read it. This project documents moments from the lives of my niece and nephew, Andrea and Angel. I thought they are no longer children, they just take life with items for the children that are combined with other more appropriate for teenagers. A fusion between their imagination, their struggle for individual independence, and the construction of identity. The exploration of the family universe allows me to revisit the moment in the past, has a sort of flashback in order to reserve for hidden meanings that enhance the present context. I identify with those fields that use physical space to represent, to represent an emotional space, a symbol that apply to photographic image. The, metaf the metaphor for the sinister words, the metaphor for the sinister works in the same way as the things that I feel to us because of their unfamiliarity and because of the mysterious shapes they take by evoking a strange place that is associated with period of intense physical and internal change. My knees and new few childhood and the memory and the memory of my arm were factors behind this investigation of memory and fiction by grouping their experience with my own, the past and the present, the fantasy and the memory, I attempt to reconcile a break in my past with a combined vision that is able to bring together the child's view and the adult perspective in order to change. Artist, if I may say that, uh, I was a little bit jealous about the street photographers because they, they just took their camera and they walk and they took uh, what they found, uh, but, in my, but my process is more in the studio, so I wanted to go out and take some photographs. So I, I did that, and uh, I mean this is like the, the unusual series of my work, uh, but I really enjoyed it. Enjoy it. I worked like for uh, three years, three or four years, and and. What I am presenting is like a, like a narrative, like a mysterious narrative. Maybe you can think about a movie, you know, like, like a mystery movie. Uh, each of one of these pictures are like different stages of, let's say, like the same labyrinth, you know? Uh, 
and so that's why each in each in each image uh, everything is is getting uh, more more weird, more mysterious, more unpredictable as I as I see. So so that is that is the, the big picture of the of the series. Why the work cinematic, as you say? Is that what you're trying to say? The work that it's cinematic. It's um, uh, you, you you mentioned that it's, it's like um, like movie stills mm -hmm. in a way, um, and in a cinematic a cinematic concept, there would be change because the camera always comes in and examines every little thing. Okay. Uh, it it doesn't just look at the overall. It looks at comes into this room, it looks at you, maybe your face, you know, might look at your face, looks at everybody, looks at them, looks at us, and you get all those different angles and cutaways, as it's known, and that's what you have here. What fascinates me most about your work is not so much how you go about it, it's what you see when you're going about it, okay? There, it is that tone, that mysteriousness of tone, it's that talking about cinema, it's that film noir approach where you make as much as shadow and light as possible when you have so little of it. Yes. It's like working on a complete budget, okay. a rock bottom budget. A little bit of the set shows, a little bit of the lighting, where every little thing has to, has to be planned so that when it's all put together, it works. It looks like a million dollars, but it only took $25. Okay. And that's, and, and you work with that very sparing uh, sensibility okay. and uh, a subject, uh, a face, uh, like a, 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 you know, you have a, a, um, a, like a bush over there, and everything's in the dark, the light is clearly on there. I'd be curious to know if you lit that, if you lit that actually, or when it was natural. It was natural. Was it? Yeah. It's like a moonbeam, something, uh, landing on a... No, bush. sorry, I used a flash. Oh, you did, you said, yes. No, that's good, you know what's gonna happen. Yeah, so I, I, I like that. How do you feel about that feeling of cinematic and film noir? But mostly I'm impressed by the, the mystery, the edge. The, I'm fascinated with what you see okay. and how you separate the, the, the subject from the light and how your subjects are mostly in the shadow. Yes. And that is a very big challenge for the photographer. Do you feel challenged when you're out there? Do you find that you take photographs that you can't use? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. The challenge was that, I mean, the, the definition of photography is writing with light. No? So, 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 so the main... Uh, yeah, but you're a concept uh, photographer, we're going to dispense with that. <laughs> you're going to write without light, or a little light. Yes, you know? yes, that, nice, yes, yes. You tend to work around So, so I, I work it the, mm -hmm. like in the other way. How you can uh, photograph with shadows, not with light, mm -hmm. no? And it was really difficult for me to 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 put a line that uh, because if it was too dark, you can't see uh, anything. But it was too light; it was not that mysterious. So in in every in every picture, it was like this uh, trying, like if if this shadow or if this like. Is enough to create this mystery. Yes. But you, you said the people, you said the objects. But for me, the most important, the most important thing was the atmosphere. So I mean, yes, I know that. Because, but the 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 objects and the people were just, uh, you know, something. No, I know, I know that it's atmosphere. But there's another layer there. The, 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 there's another layer. That's why you won the award today. You know, technique is just the foundation. I mean, it's the building. Yes. You know, and that's, you know, that's all my students, because I teach color printing in the 20th century style at ICP. If I can't read the shadows, don't show it to me. <laughs> You're gonna, there's going to be problems. I have to read the shadows. And that's exactly what I read when I see, I could read the shadows. Like, I see everything in shadows. My whole story is playing around in the shadows. For me, that's a very exciting. Yes, as, exciting happening. As, um, as a conceptual uh, photographer, if we can say that, uh, that is very rational 
for me this was a, a big challenge because it was like not me doing the images, you know? It's like someone else is doing that those images. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really, for me it's really interesting to use shadow because that, um, that put, puts a question for the for the viewer, you know? The viewer has to have to 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 put the other part of the image, no? Yes, you have a shadow there, but what else? What what is what is behind? What is deep on, on that yeah. on the shadow? There, well this is what I can say about a good photograph. There are lots of questions. Yeah. You, of course. Have, you have to do the answering. It's like Jeopardy. Yeah. You know? You come up with a what is and the who is. Yes. And the image is there for you to find those answers in. Yes. You know? yes. But I'd like to just talk about Roberto's work also. I want to make sure we get there. Maybe we will be able to translate for him. You can help you Can you help me? Yes, it would be. No, I'd like you to discuss a little bit more about the work. And, you know, we're talking about um, uh, going into a studio. Uh, you brought yours out onto the street, and then you go into an environment. How much of the work that you see in your mind is there when you get there? I mean, uh, your your niece, uh, the uh, props, the mask, the the, the 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 curtains. I mean, are you already are you do you already know they're there, and do you have the image set up, or is this something you walk into, and you just know it's going to happen in some way, like we've talked about. Um, durante el estudio eh, de alguna manera fue llevarla no a la calle sino al espacio adentro de la casa y considerar el espacio interno de la casa como un escenario okay. donde podía poner las luces oh, so he was saying that eh, he likes the, to work in the studio but he thought that it would be a, it would be a good idea to have the, the lighting and the props inside the house and to, to look what happened Ajá, donde los protagonistas eran mis sobrinos y había a veces una idea preconcebida o, y como son niños para, eh, después la libertad de, de hacer cualquier cosa. So, so he first decided that maybe they can make some some pictures, they have the props, but then uh, the, the process was open to whatever what, what to whatever happens. Right. And also uh, taking advantage that there were kids uh, yeah. and the freedom of the kids pretty much being unpredictable. Y lo que estuve viendo fue más bien el uso de color en el cine para impregnarla de una cualidad emocional al carácter de la cine. Okay. And he said that uh, he also uh, taking account. Uh, cinematography and he really studied color to make uh, like a like a layer of like an emotional layer to the pictures. Yes, yeah, so so to similar subjects and there are sometimes uh, very often in some of your work it looks more playful than anything else and you really have to delve into it to see some of the irony that you employ in some of the symbols. Do you know what I'm saying? Everybody looks at them, looks at us and you get all those different angles and cutaways, as it's known, and that's what you have here. What fascinates me most about your work is not so much how you go about it, it's what you see when you're going about it. Okay. There, it is that tone, that mysteriousness of tone. It's that, talking about cinema, it's that film noir approach where you make as much as shadow and light as possible when you have so little of it. Yes. It's like working on a complete budget. Okay. A rock bottom budget. A little bit of the set shows, a little bit of the lighting work. Every little thing has to has to be planned so that when it's all put together, it works. It looks like a million dollars <laughs> when it only took $25. Okay. And, that's, and, and you work with that very sparing a sensibility, okay, and uh, a subject, uh, a face, uh, like a, 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 you know, you have a, a, um, a, like a bush over there, and you, everything's in the dark. The light is clearly on there. I'd be curious to know if you lit that. 
You lit that, actually. Oh, but it was natural. It was natural. Was it? Yeah. It's like the moonbeam or something landing on a... No, sorry, I used a flash. Oh, you did? You see? Yes. No, that's good. You know what's going to happen. Yeah. So I, I, I like that. How do you feel about that feeling of cinematic and film noir? But mostly I'm impressed by the, the mystery, the edge. The, I'm fascinated with what you see okay. and how you separate the, the, the subject from the light and how your subjects are mostly in the shadow. Yes. And that is a very big challenge for the photographer. Of course. Do, you, do you feel challenged when you're out there? Do you find that you take photographs that you can't use? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> uh, the challenge was that, I mean, the, the definition of photography is writing with light. No? So, 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 so the main... Uh, yes, but you're a concept uh, photographer. We're going to dispense with that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to write without light, or a little light. Yes, you yes. That, and yes, yes. You took, you're going to work around so, that. So I, I work it like, mm -hmm. like in the other way. How you can uh, photograph with shadows, not with light. Mm -hmm. no? And it was really difficult for me to, to, to put a line that, uh, because if it was too dark, you can't see uh, anything, but it was too light, it was not that mysterious. So in, in, every, in every picture, it was like this uh, trying, like if, the, if, if this shadow or if this light is enough to create this mystery. Yes. But you, you said the people, you said the, the objects, but for me, the most, impor the most important thing was the atmosphere. Oh, I mean, yes, I know be that. Because, but the, the, the objects and the people were just, uh, you know, something. No, I know, I know that it's atmosphere, but there's another layer there. The, 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 there's another layer, that's why you won the award, incidentally. Okay. There has to be another layer. It can't be technique. No, 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 of course it's all, not technique. You know, no, technique no, no. is just the foundation. I mean, it's the building. Yes. You know, and that's, yes. you know what I tell my students when they teach color printing, mid 20th century style at ICP? If I can't read the shadows, don't show it to me. <laughs> You're gonna, there's gonna be problems. I have to read the shadows. And that's exactly what I read when I, when I see, I could read the shadows. Yeah. I can see everything in the shadows. My whole story is playing around in the shadows. For me, that's a very exciting, yes, as, exciting happening. As, um, as a conceptual uh, photographer, if we can say that, uh, that is very rational. For me, this was a, a big challenge because it was like not me doing the images, you know? It's like someone else is doing that those images, mm -hmm. and uh, it was really for me. It's really interesting to use shadow because that um, that was, puts a question for the for the viewer. You know, the viewer has to have to 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 put the other part of the image. You no, know? yes, you have a shadow there, but what else? What, what is what is behind? What is deep on, on that? Yeah. The shadow. There, well, this is what I say about a good photograph. There are lots of questions. Yeah, you, of course. You have to do the answer. It's like Jeopardy. Yeah. You know, you come <laughs> up with the what is and the who is, yes. and the image is there for you to find those answers. Yes. In, you know? yes. But I'd like to just talk about Roberto's work also. I want to make sure we get fair time. And you would um, you don't translate for him, but you can. You, you, you need. Anything. Can you help? Yes. Okay. Good. No, I'd like you to discuss a little bit more about the work, and you know we're talking about um, uh, going into a studio. Uh, you brought yours out onto the street, and then you go into an environment. How much of the work that you see in your mind is there when you get there? I mean, uh, your your niece, uh, the uh, props, the mask. The, 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 the curtains, I mean, are you already, are you, do you already know they're there? And they, do you have the image set up or is this something you walk into and you just know it's going to happen in some way, like we've talked about? Sí, te voy a contestar en español. Sí, también como Juan Carlos platicaba, la idea de, me gusta más la fotografía de estudio y de alguna manera, fue llevarlo no a la calle, sino al espacio adentro de la casa, 
y considerar el espacio interno de la casa como un escenario okay. donde podía poner las luces. Oh. So he was saying that uh, he likes the to work in a studio, but he thought that it would be a, it would be a good idea to have the, the lighting and, and the props inside the house and to, to look what happens. Ajá, donde los protagonistas eran mis sobrinos y había a veces una idea preconcebida o, y como son niños <coughs> uh, eh, después la libertad de, de hacer cualquier otra cosa. So, so he first decided that maybe they can make some some pictures, they have the props, but then uh, the, the process was open to whatever what happened to whatever it happens. Right. And also uh, taking advantage that they were kids, uh, yeah. uh, the freedom of the kids is much more unpredictable. What else? I think they also have a quality of the cinema, and what I was watching was more the use of color in the cinema to make it a quality of emotional to the character of the image. Uh, he said that uh, he also uh, took into account uh, cinematography and he really studied color to make uh, like, a, like a layer of, like an emotional layer to the pictures. Yes, and so I was concerned about, you know, but the, the, these two uh, photographers, you're so different in your approach to similar subjects and there are sometimes, uh, very often in some of your work, it looks more playful than anything else, so you really have to delve into it to see some of the irony that you employ in some of the symbols. Do you know what I'm saying? De las Pagno. I was looking at it. I'm sure. It's okay. <laughs> some of the irony, you know, the masks and the, the, the colorful wallpaper, the fabric, there's, a kind, there's kind of a circus performance piece going on. You know, at the same time, and I'm, I, you know, I'm sure you're aware of that. And there's certain kind of um, uh, opposites going on at the same time. Sí, que hay mucha ironía y que se percibe más como un performance que está sucediendo y que tú lo estás documentando. Así es. Un poco como David Lynch. Bueno, me vi algunas cosas de cine de David Lynch y como de Rats. Me gusta un poco como la documentación del performance a través de la cámara, pero con los estudios algo más. Okay, he said that that lady, David Lynch was in his mind, and yes. the, 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 the rabbits. The no, rabbits. it's the film. Ah, the film, the, the rabbits. rabbits. Okay. So yeah, he assumed that like a performance that he is documenting, documenting with his camera. It's weird that he he mentioned David Lynch because it was the same my same reference for, for this picture. <laughs> And because I like it because see, he, I see, he's very white and very and that, Yes, yeah. but I see Fellini's touches also. Ah. Yeah, I, I, I see that in, in, in some of in some of the work. I wanted to ask you: Do you ever show the pictures to your niece and nephew? Have they seen all the pictures? Que si ya le muestras el trabajo a tus sobrinos. Sí, sí, sí. Qué diferente. Pues se divirtieron mucho. Pero sobre todo, bueno, mi sobrina más grande lo vio como un trabajo un poco engorroso, pero que al final la recompensa fue que para ella verse como en un álbum familiar. Disfrutarlo tanto como un álbum familiar verdadero, no un álbum familiar de los clásicos que guardan solo momentos felices. Ok, so it was, uh, it was difficult for them, uh, it was too, too much work for them. But at the end, they realized that they were like uh, in the pictures of the family. They were they, they were building a family album, not in the traditional way, but in a new way. Yeah, I mean, uh, too much work for them. I mean, so much. So, yeah. so oh, so much work. Yeah, it's, it's oh, a huge you have to pay them. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, and they work. They work as fantasy. They work as autobiography. I mean. It, most of all the work you guys do are about yourselves. I mean, I think when we get on to what you're doing in that, your new series, it, what, that's recent, right? This one, uh, the, the last one, yes. Yeah, and this year, Roberto, these are recent, correct? Yeah. Some, some, some it's, it's, it's a different palette altogether. Um, 
No, está hecho a, a la mitad del, tra del trabajo, al mismo tiempo que, el traba que ese trabajo de color, nada más que es una parte del trabajo que en su momento yo descarté y ahora digamos que lo rescato porque creo que tiene mucha relación hablando del inconsciente. Yes. Uh, they were made at the same time, but the, uh, the main edition was that, and then he rescued these images for the show. Yes, I rescue because I, I think this part represents the unconscious because all the children in the fairy tales throw, walk through to, to the forest and thus in this part is that represents about the inner patterns without. Is this your niece and nephew growing up? Well, no, 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 Because it's so elusive, water you can't grab it. You, know, you can only be drawn into it, and like there's no escape. Yes. It's a trap. Yes. That's yes. that's the that's what the, I should have said that right in the beginning. Uh, it, 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 it's like a trap. It's like quicksand. Yes. You know, once you start going down, it's hard to get up. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yes. That's why I bring the. the I think you said. Because, I, don't know because where that comes from. I think it was because I was thrown in when I was a child, and also because my parents absolutely insisted that I go to Coney Island, mm -hmm. and I hated it. <laughs> and I said, as soon as I'm old enough, they'll never see my face again. And I was. Mm -hmm. So but that's why I, when I looked at your work, I thought, I, I told you that you know, I have a phobia. Yes. You know, you know? But, that, but for me, it's interesting yes. that you, you had that reaction to the, mm -hmm. to the, uh, the pictures, well, I because, I did, because that, that, that is why, uh, what I was looking for. Well, yeah, I don't find anything uh, particularly peaceful about it. It's not like like Ronnie Horn's Thames, the, 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 you know, all the water that she did. I find that to be very, um, that's very relaxing. Okay. Even though she has like 200 of them in one room, I mean, they're, 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 they're very meditative okay. in, in many respects. But I don't feel yours are, are meditating. The no. water's is kind of uh, uh, in a rage. Alan, did you want to ask? Yeah, me? I know that, um Roberto just won the Robert G. Art Foundation Award oh, for yes. a new body of work, so I was wondering if they could talk about what they're working on now as well. Mm -hmm. um, sí, eh, este año apliqué a la beca Robert G. Art y soy en el beneficiario 2018 y es un proyecto nuevo acerca de 
las chuntas, una tradición en Chiapas donde hombres se visten de mujer y para mí ocupa más. Ok, so he won this, little by little. This, this grant that is called, ¿cómo se llama? Robert Jeff. Uh, Robert Jeff, para, to develop this project about the chuntas, that is this traditional festival where uh, men dress like women. Um, eh, y estuve pensando eh, por qué me interesaba hacer un proyecto sobre ese personaje y tiene que ver con que ocupa un lugar intermedio de géneros entre ser hombre y ser mujer y también y donde se construye la subjetividad donde la subjetividad está en transición y que tiene que de alguna manera se conecta con el trabajo de mis sobrinos porque son niños y niñas están construyendo su subjetividad desde la base. So he chose this character because he is in between being a, a, a male or a female that uh, it relates with, with identity. So that's how uh, he relates that, uh, that work to this one because here they are in, in their, almost in their adolescence when, when they are developing their own identity. Um, was es un proyecto que se detona a partir de la muerte de mi papá eh, y con ese hecho se cierra digamos la etapa de, de libro de, de casita de turrón que es este proyecto y, y, y me lleva a experimentar la fiesta y es relatarla desde desde mi, mi subjetividad también desde mi de, desde mi experiencia o sea comenzaste el trabajo por la muerte de tu Ajá. padre de la chuntas. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so he began this project because, um, how can I say? It? Uh, his father passed away. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, his father passed away. So he began this project, and he 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 assumed that project that, like a continuity of this of this one. Es como una continuación. No, con eso eh, se termina este proyecto de Casita okay, de Turrón. Ok, con este nuevo proyecto, este es todo. Ok. Es, es, es una, un momento decisivo de fractura en mí que provoca okay. que otra cosa surja. So, here es un nuevo proyecto que involucra a transvestites o crossdressers. ¿Es eso lo que estás diciendo? Sí, sí. Es reemplazar, es ahora coming after this. Eso es lo que quieres un award for. Es una continuación de, o sea, esto de las transvestis y demás es como una continuación de esto. No lo considero una eh, continuación porque no son los mismos personajes, okay. pero eh, conceptualmente hay una, hay puntos en común. ¿no? Como, sí, como de, como de, de, la, de la memoria, el yeah. pasado. They are not exactly the continuation, but uh, they they relate each other because these questions about identity and. Yes, I didn't mean it to be a continuation. I know that it's something altogether new. No. Is that is that project just relegated to Mexico, or will you take it if, when you're in New York, for example? I mean, this the gender issues are global. ¿Estás interesado solamente esa zona, o te gustaría también experimentarlo en otras partes del mundo? La sí, de alguna manera me di cuenta que mi trabajo se articuló en un principio desde el seno familiar y que poco fue creciendo una reflexión social que primero que está abarcando mi espacio cultural en Chiapas por medio de paso, pero, no. No, está bien, está bien. pero que quiero continuar en donde sea o sea lo que aprendí en casa lo quiero replicar en cualquier parte del mundo cualquier fue la base no para entenderme a mí sobre todo okay. so he begins in Chiapas because uh, this is the place where he is from and his family so It's like starting in this point, but um, maybe he will he will do it in another place. Okay. Does that answer your question, Alan? No, 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 no problem. Yes. About the new project, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm really interested about forgetting and the relationship between photography and, and forgetting. You know, it's like it's almost like uh, like this one that. I I began working with shadow with, instead of light. Photography is also well known for, for memory, but now I'm interested on in how uh, forgetting works in photography or, or can be related to photography. 
So in 2014, I began I began a project called uh, uh, Fotografías Perdidas, that in English would be lost lost photographs, and I began interviewing people who who had lost. Uh, important uh, images, you know, like the grandfather, the grandparents, the boyfriends, girlfriends, you know. And for me, it was really interesting how on how people uh, talked about that image, you know, how how they describe me the, the the picture, and, uh, and it was also really interesting on how they lost it, you know. Sometimes it was. It just disappeared. They didn't know why. Sometimes they, they burn it. Sometimes uh, because a uh, a flow. And so for me, in, in that project, uh, language was like the, uh, the 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 last thing you have of that of that image. I mean, you can't see that image, but. You can describe it. You can imagine it. You know that that for, for me that was very interesting. And then I have this this project that, that I, I well I will describe it. And um, I bought a, a family album in a flea market in Mexico City, a famous flea market in Mexico City that is called La Lagunilla, and it was the, the whole family album. And um, so. I was asking myself if I have the right to uh, to reinterpret that those images, you know, that if they were not mine, if I had the right to uh, to create a new story with this. So my final answer was that I was I was not allowed to, to do that. So so I decided to uh, to lost that those images in purpose. You no, know? in the first project was like and reconstructing the images, but in this second project was losing, losing them on purpose. So, so I went to, the, to a library, to an important uh, library in, in Mexico City at UNAM, and, and I, I took all the, all the images of the album, and a big surprise in that, in that action, in that performance, maybe we can see it that way, I record that, is that uh, I found uh, a portrait under uh, under a, a picture of a landscape. So I was taking the, the images, and and the portrait was hidden there. So one of my <coughs> conclusions was that maybe forgetting, instead of taking away the images, it can, the act of forgetting can, can give you can give us new images. No. So then I I took those pictures to the library and I decided <coughs> to put them inside the books. So, uh, so I just walked inside the pages of the yes, book. Yes, yes, inside mm -hmm. the pages of the books. So I just walked through the through the library through all the subject matters, you know, geography, mm -hmm. maths, uh, history. <coughs> And I, in random, I just ch I just chose a book and I put it there, and leave it there like a like a like a little gift for the future uh, readers. Then I, in the final exhibition, I put the, the title of the, or the classification of the book, so the the viewers can decide if that was a good idea or and. Maybe they can go and look for them and uh, and join again all the all the photographs. So the last time I went to to look for them, I think they were just they were 127 photographs, and and we just found like the half of it. The other one they they were gone. They were gone, but not for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, so, so in, in this work, my, my, my goal was that when someone uh, found this or finds this, these pictures, they decide what to do with, with that image. So I left, I left control, not to them. And, and, and the last uh, series
series that I'm working on or, or project that I'm working on is that I'm, uh, I'm trying to convert a, a family album into a garden. I mean, converting photographs into plants. How uh, I'm uh, using, I'm working with a biologist and we, we made some experiments that and we are using uh, these this plants, these uh, plants that helps to a process that is called bioremediation. That is, these kind of plants they are used to clean uh, to clean water when when you have oil in there or, or heavy or hard metals, you know. So these these plants uh, feed themselves with with the silver of the of the place, you know. So. I am uh, planting the photographs with the seeds of this of this uh, this kind of plants. So the plants, when while they are growing, they are filling themselves with the, with the silver. So I want the memory that uh, in the picture has the the, the figure of, or, or or we can say memory is in silver. How I can uh, translate this or, uh, or how I can move this silver that is embodying uh, m memory to, uh, to a plant. So that's, that's the, the whole experiment. And that's why Fascinating, I, I must say. And I was Something there. I've never heard of. Yes. So, so we are in the, in, the experimental process, in the experimental process. So we are now looking for, for funds to, to make that happen. They are like uh, one fifty, one hundred fifty <coughs> images. Um, that, that's it. Well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if there are any yes, questions. anyone would like to ask questions? You know what I tell my class when they do this to me? <laughs> Nobody leaves until someone asks. <laughs> One question, you can go home. <laughs> I tell that to Mike. Okay. <laughs> Let me do all the talking. Oh, sure. So, just thinking about being in New York and exhibiting <coughs> in New York, uh, how do you relate the experience of coming here to uh, present this work to the context in which you do your work in Mexico? What does it mean to have this uh, space, and how do you relate it back? Okay. your work and what you're planning to do. Okay. Eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo nos sentimos de estar mostrando este trabajo en, en Nueva York? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. ¿Cómo te sientes? No, es una gran pregunta eh, porque creo que de eso se trata la imagen, de que una imagen bien hecha es universal y que tiene como una manera de comunicar que no radica en el lenguaje ni, ni en el texto, sino mm -hmm. que como que le llega a uno desde la parte mucho más este, interna. Y eso, eso me, me agrada. Claro, he says that, uh, but image is not about, that, that images or photographs can be universal. So, so they, don't, uh, they don't need text or language to, to read them. So that's, that's his goal. No? Did I say that right? Okay. And for me, for me, yeah, also I, I think it was a good answer of, of Roberto. And for me, uh, I mean, I, I agree with that idea, it's, it's my, my same idea. But also to, to present something <coughs> that maybe is not, in some context, is not that Mexican, you know? But because maybe, we, we Mexican photographers deal with that all the time when we, when we go abroad, no? You know, in Europe and sometimes in, in America, they, they expect hats and magueyes and, <laughs> and <laughs> yes. And we have to deal with that, with that uh, image. So, so for me, uh, I feel very lucky to, to show this work and show that we have and another things and another things to say to, to, to Americans and to Europeans, you know, to the world. And, and we, as a presenting space, are very proud to have 
have this little taste of the incredible work that was being produced in Mexico. Two years ago, I saw the photo biennial in Mexico City. I can't remember how many artists were in that in 1960. But it was the most outstanding group show and photograph scene since then and before then, by several years. I mean, it was just, it was photo and video, and it was um, such uh, outstanding work and so many outstanding artists. Yes. And I feel very little of that gets, finds its way here and gets seen and understood. I agree so. with you, Alan. I think Mexico is very um, underestimated in terms of the power of their art in general, and particularly in the photography. But they're great artists. Um, I saw a show in Monterey uh, about contemporary media, video and uh, documentary work. That was, uh, as soon as I saw it, I said, this has got to come to New York. I mean, will somebody please raise the funds to get this out of here? I mean, it was brilliant. Brilliant. And it was a big show. It was in Fundador, you know, the big the museum they have in there? It was incredible. And I, I agree. I think Mexico is just artistically vital. Yes. A vital country. Uh, and I think it's uh, underestimated a lot. Yeah. And we have a really people big... People want the pyramids. Yes. I mean, they, want the, they want the mariachi. Yes. <laughs> You can't blame them a little, a little bit. Yes, I will but say in a moment. moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and, uh, and we have a really big tradition of photography. I mean, uh, photography after it was invented, we have two, two years later was in Mexico mm -hmm. because our one of our presidents was a huge fan fan of Mexico of French culture. So he decided that we have to imitate French people. So that's why we have a really <laughs> so so that's why we have a very long tradition in, in photography in Mexico. You know, in the nineteen fifties when I well I wouldn't no, let's forget about the decade. I used to think that, I used to think that and I still do that Mexico City was the leader in architecture. Really? I still am so blown away by the beauty of that city, mm -hmm. the modern Mexico City. Yes. Uh, it, it, it's it, how 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 streamlined it is. I know the city as a whole it is a little messy, but the but the the planning of this modern okay. Mexico City is it's been like that for the last sixty years, give or take an earthquake. Okay, yeah. this got you know that would that would rumble things up a little. But I always yeah. thought Mexico City was renowned for its architecture. I still when I yeah. go there and I walk down. Uh, that huge street, I can't remember the name of it offhand. I just marvel at the, at the magnificence yes. of those buildings. Yes. And I never feel when I'm in Mexico any detachment from the past or the present. I feel that it's a perfect marriage of past and present. Uh, the, the art which goes back centuries and the art and the photography that I know, the majority of it, which really packs in um, politics. Okay. And uh, the present uh, environment of Mexico, in terms of its economics and other things that impact art, okay. uh, I find it very uh, important and, and big. Yes, I think for for us is is we all we always have to deal with that with that past and present. You know, we have to take it uh, with us because that that it that's what. Make us uh, Mexican. And that's exactly, what, that's what's so uh, special about yes, it. Yes, yes, I agree. So, but we it's have this one. this continuous mm -hmm. uh, question about uh, about what does it mean to be to be Mexican? You know, because we are a mix of so many different cultures. As you guys, hmm? it's a little different. Yes, of course. Okay, so because he, we, we we have this this ancient. We don't allow. We're not allowed to have a past. Okay. <laughs> Look at New York. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's all about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, yes. Yo tengo una pregunta. Ustedes, es la primera vez que están juntos en una exposición o ya habían compartido. 
sido un espacio y una galería. Is this is the first time that you both your board are is like showing them as a part of the same exhibition or, or like that you work together. So, ¿cómo es la relación? We are partners. Yeah. The first time I I know I know him I know Juan Carlos was in a, a, a Mexican fellowship. Is in that case was my first experience to having a fellowship, the an important fellowship for job creators, and I think for Juan Carlos was this the first time, and at the same time with me. Yeah, it um, was, was 2008. Yeah. 2000, yes, 2008. And then and until and then then we then we share. It's it's beautiful this moment because we have this moment uh, five years ago in Madrid in Spain. We also were there to we show, show, show show some some of this of okay. this work, mm -hmm. and we were talking about this work. So like like brother. Yeah, we are growing now together until that. And they both showed. They both showed separately. I think one year what at Photoville, the Tierney Fellowship. Yes, also, this, this that that. yes. So this is not the first time in Mex in in Mex well in Spain, and then the work went to to Brazil, no, con Foto España. Yeah. Okay. No? So we we applied to a portfolio review in Costa Rica also, mm -hmm. and we are selected after that to make an exhibition. Our collective exhibit with another friend in Foto España and then in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's not it's a coincidence. Oh, no, no, no. I think <laughs> I, I, it's, it's funny because I, I, I mean, I consider Roberto as a, as a close friend, but that we have different approaches to photography, but at the end we end in the same, in the same gallery, you know? Same gallery. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So thank you so much for um, this thank talk. You. And mm -hmm. now we're we're gonna move the chairs and, and we can go see the show and then see, thank go you. downstairs for this mess out. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much for coming.